Pink Floyd, Dave Gilmour, Nick Mason, Roxy Music, Brian Ferry, Gary Moore, Madonna, Michael Jackson, The Smiths, Robert Palmer, Echo in the... I love Echo in the Money Man. Tears for Fears, Banana Rama, Iggy Pop, Tom Jones, Debbie Harry, Whitesnake. I'm here with my friend Ian Martin Allison, Sharon Reynolds behind the camera, and our special guest today is the one and only... <laughs> Guy Pratt, absolute monster bass player. And what we're going to be doing today is just talking about, you know, general sort of like bass geekiness. He's got his incredible oh, jazz Betsy, bass. My beloved What's it Betsy. Called? Betsy. Betsy. So we've got Betsy here, we've got the pedal board, and we're also going to be listening to some of the tracks that guys played on, like Madonna and Michael Jackson, and what effects he used. And like, I want to know what studios we were in. We want to know, like, what. So like, do I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, tell us about Betsy first. Like, when did you get this bass? I got Betsy in, uh, it was. February 1987, I collected her from the Bass Centre. The Bass Centre now do a fantastic replica bass, which Bass Magazine voted one of the best basses of the 21st century. Um, oh. And yeah, best selling replica they've ever done. She's John Entwistle's. You know, owning a bass that belonged to John Entwistle is like owning a pair of shoes that belonged to Imelda Marcos, isn't it? I mean, he's just, he basically had all of them. Did at he one had point all of the he bases, all of didn't he? And yeah. I think he actually, because the stories they only made, it's 1964. They only made three that color, but they made three whole sets. Yeah, there was a jazz, a precision, a strat, a tenor, yeah. whatever. And apparently he had the whole set. What's, what's the color called? Uh, Burgundy Mist. Burgundy Mist. <laughs> Just pointing out, like, Ian is a freaking <laughs> vintage jazz nerd. That's like underplaying it. I <laughs> dream in the Fender color wheel. <laughs> <laughs> I see the world and I wonder if how that blue compares to Daphne blue or Lake Placid blue or right? I mean, I love it's the but Fender They're all car color colors, wheel. aren't they? Yes. They're all car colors, yes. it's fantastic. And I was trying it because I got a... Um, pick it up, pick it up so the guys can sorry, see. Sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So, yes, I bought it from John Entwistle. And, um, and she was really quiet and really noisy. And when I, the thing is, when I got the Pink Floyd gig, which was in August that year, I went out to rehearsals. In the world I lived in, people were like, that's quite nice. You deserve Yeah, I'm thinking of putting new pickups in, or I was thinking of getting a new bridge. You know, you say that. In Pink Floyd, it's like being at an auction. Anything you say happens. Oh, really? You know, I was just like, yeah. I said to Sid, my tech, I've never had my own tech before, you know. I was thinking of maybe getting some new pickups for this. I don't know, see how it goes. Next day, there's new pickups in wow. it. And it's yeah. like, and um, I was like, they're EMGs, you can't <laughs> fucking EMGs in a 64 jazz. It's like, if you didn't ask, are you insane? And it's like, oh, hang on a minute. Whoa. So, and then oh. I, what he didn't tell me, and I didn't know for years, was that it suddenly started to get quieter. And it's because it's active. And yeah, I couldn't yeah. figure out, for years, I couldn't figure out why the tone pot stuck up a little bit. And it's because there's a battery, battery wedged underneath it. And I literally didn't know it had a battery in it for about, for literally six or seven years. Amazing. But that's why it sounds amazing. Because when I first got her, um, it had this, um, but I think it's got bigger. Check this video out. This oh, is the first was... time I saw it. But check this out. Like, that's the freaking sound. Uh, that's the sound. Let's blow it up. This was my dream sound. When I was like, yeah, that's, uh, when I was my, It's mine, it's mine. It's mine. Yeah, it's yours. Oh, yeah. But oh. you know what's interesting is is that I think it, it's a sound that, that was in my head rather than what, that's what I thought all disco records sounded like. And you go back and listen to them and they actually don't. They don't no, no. A lot of, you know, I mean, Bernard does. But, but uh, there's lots of those on record where you listen to it and go, ah, oh, 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 you know, like, I should have loved you. It doesn't sound the yeah, way I remember yeah. it. Uh, yeah, that doesn't sound like that. It sounds yeah, almost played yeah. like a pick. This thing is basically, I was doing a disco project, a really good friend of mine, uh, the very, very brilliant James Wilshire, who used to be one of the Freemasons. He now does all these fantastic sample packs. And we were doing this disco project together. And he just said to me once, he said, you know what you do with your right hand? And I said, what, what do you mean? He said, you know how you play, or that, that, that stroking thing you do and everything. I said, no, he said, I'm going to film it. So and he, he basically filmed, filmed it. That. He said, yes. that was to show me what I do with my right hand. Oh. Is and that the story of that yeah, video? Yeah, that's, that's why that video exists. 
just so he could chat. I went, oh my God, that video. Oh. I was, it's like, I, it, it was like having a bass lesson with myself. <laughs> but it's almost like I mustn't watch it because if I think, if I think about it, then I won't be able to do it. Yeah, 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 of course, <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. Because yeah. I didn't realise that, that, you know, uh, well, I don't know the technical term. Like raking down. Raking, raking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that yeah. when you play like one string and then hit another string? Yeah. Was, yeah. yeah. That, oh, yeah, yeah. Thing, yeah. When you go down from that D string down to the E string, right, you're raking through. Yeah. There's another, there's a David Gilmore track uh, called Today. And for some reason, that note needs to be dead. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah, why, yeah, yeah, but it, yeah. do you know what I mean? And it's a funny thing where it's uh, there are times when you I don't know when you need it you know but when you do you do yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you ever like was it something that you just started doing randomly yeah, yeah totally yeah. everything is something I started doing randomly because I have this <laughs> thing more and more especially since I did my videos and everything and, and I can't remember how I learned to play the bass did you I know that really I did young? it all the time did you do it really young I was I was I was just about to turn fourteen mm. so I wasn't that young uh, but I started on the bass not on the guitar. Yeah, and all and and of course there was no drum machines back then. There was no, you know, it was just me in my room half the time, not even plugged in. And I know I had a thing about I didn't want to learn too many other people's songs because I thought that stopped you getting your own style. Oh. No, it doesn't. It teaches you how to play the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right, so, yeah. so I don't even know what I played, and I don't, and I didn't practice scale. I know I didn't really practice scales. Yeah. And so I don't know what I did, but all I know is that, you know, and anyone who knew me at the time, whenever I bump into people from school or anything, you know, they just go, man, you just played that bass all the, you know, all day, every all day, that's all yeah, you did. Yeah. You know? And were you put, did you get to the point where you were learning other people's lines? But There's I said, a few videos online where you're just talking about disco bass lines. Yeah, no, that, that's yeah. right. That I did at that point, and, yeah. And you're just, just sort of like... In fact, you know what? It that seems was like thing. you know all the disco bass yeah. lines. Yeah. Yeah. That I was working in a really brilliant old clothes shop up the top of Portobello Road. Because uh, of course I did. It's, I remember Johnny Marr <laughs> saying to me, "So, can what do you do before you're a musician?" I said, "Well, I was working in a graphic shop, but then I, you know, I worked in a clothes shop." Went, of course, did. All musicians work in a clothes shop. It's true. <laughs> 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 and uh, one of the guys who worked there was my was my original mentor. This guy J C Carroll, still my friend to this day. Who who from the members? He wrote Sound of the Suburbs and everything. And he wanted to start this sort of disco side project. And we used to just listen to African music and disco in the shop. And he played "I Should Have Loved You." Right, by Norad and Michael Walden. Yeah. And he just said to me, if you learn to play like that, I'll start a band with you. I thought, all right. So I went home and I did. So good. It is a uh, thick, isn't it? Is it TM yeah, Stevens? It's TM Stevens. But he's got that thing where he can be funky with the pick, whereas I can't. It's such a great track. You play this with your fingers, yeah. <laughs> now I'm gonna have to learn that. <laughs> nah, can't be. I'm too old. <laughs> Oh, I would love to ask you too about some of these effects and how you've used them on tracks. We were talking about the octave pedal. Well, there, yeah, that did become a sort of trademark for a while. And it's, discovering the octave pedal is like, I think, for being a guitarist and discovering delay. Mm. I remember the first, yeah, the first time you play your guitar, you're Actually, just like, yeah. why would you ever do anything else? Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially, especially I, when, I, when I finally learned the, the Gilmore triplet. You know, dung, dig -a -dung, dig -a -dung, yeah, that dun It's just like, what, why would you ever do anything? Why would you? Which is why the edge doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, no, no, he's amazing. But it's because um, it just makes it's a completely different instrument. Because uh, you know, you're at the dusty end without, and um, and you know, I, I mean, it's a it's a total nick. I, I, I it's from it's when I after I heard um, Taylor Playhouse down. Oh, with Pino. Oh, Pino. Yeah. But something like I don't. Mm. Like, so I've been yeah. playing with a pick for months. That's why I can't. I've got my finger chops up. But I, but I remember hearing it on the radio and just thinking, what is that? What? Well, is, you've you not know? used an octave until no, that I, point. I, and, and I I've sounded like a synth. Yeah. I thought, that's yes. not a synth. That's a bass, isn't it? Yeah. You can tell by. And I can't remember how I found out. 
You know, you could, you could, I could, you couldn't Google stuff, really. Right. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Well, you were in, ta- you were living in town, right? I was living in and town, and he yeah. was living in town. So yeah. yeah, no, yeah, I didn't come across. I didn't meet him for years, but yeah, but I found out. I think it was someone at the base centre probably would have told me. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I used yeah. to hang out at the base centre a lot, Wapping High Street. There was, you know, the idea there was a base shop where you hung out. Yeah, you know, it was oh. brilliant. So the first one I had was actually, uh, which is the only one, which is uh, OC two. What has yeah. to be the OC two? It's got to be the OC two, but because uh, I had a pearl one originally, yeah. which had this octave above which wasn't an octave above it was a very thin version of the octave that you were playing but with fuzz on it and that's obviously just because it was (laughs) (laughs) oh it wasn't intentional no it It was was just a bit shit we'll just say it's an octave above and and, uh, because the octave was designed for guitarists wasn't it I mean Hendrix used it originally yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes I don't know if Pino was actually the first person I think Tony Levin might have done it before Hmm. him I don't know but it might have been Pino I don't want to take anything away from Pino because Pino very much made it his trademark but yeah so this Pearl the funny thing is that this Pearl one got nicked and it had some distinguishing feature on it, and it turned up at the base center. Really? And I just bought. I didn't know. I just said, "That's mine," but I'll buy it. I'll buy it. Back. <laughs> and yeah, so yeah, I bought yeah, it back. Yeah. And, uh, and I can't remember. So I can't remember when I got my first OC two. For instance, with um, with Source Full of Secrets, uh, there's a, I do I do a couple of big bass pad swell things at the beginning mm. of things. Uh, and for that, I, I would never use that mm. because it's too glitchy. Like I've got a TC sub and up. And then that's got like, yeah, it's got yeah, the yeah. two octaves below that really works. Mm, really yeah. And it's so clean. It's so clean and tracks so perfectly that I can't use it as an octave pedal. Wow. Do you know what I mean? I need, I need yeah. the grunts yes. and the dirt yeah. and, of this. And I'm noticing here you have octave two all the way down yeah, and then the, you do a nice blend between yeah. dry signal and that octave down sound. You need a little bit of, yeah, you, you basically want your main signal to be that tiny bit louder than the octave, just not much. And it's got to be, it's got to be a um, bridge pickup. I noticed earlier that you were playing a lot. Yeah, I always, I always, I play two, pick I'm, I'm a two pickup man for most of the time. But yeah, for that, you need to be bridge pickup. Most of my octave pedal stuff was done on my Spectre, Spectre NS2. Mm, that's the yes. best one because you just want all that active top. You know, you yeah. can't have too much top. Yeah. I got into the Spectre because that's what Bernard Edwards played. Hmm. That's what he was playing. Oh, yeah, when I yeah, met him, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. he was playing a Spectre. So it's like, well, that's clearly the best place <laughs> yeah, in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I will sound like him <laughs> if yeah, I get his bass. I love that you still have that Spectre too. And I know. you played it all during all the lockdown sessions. Yeah, and I know. And, but the, and the, what's, I know, it's, it's, I've still got pretty much all my old, most of my old bases, yeah. except for my five strings, which I gave back to Rob Green at Status because I suddenly thought, you know what, I'm not going to play these. Hmm. Uh, that, I don't like things sitting around. Hmm. And I thought maybe you can use them or some for charity or something like that. Amazing. Now, of course, they're fashionable again. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> always happens. It, but the funny thing with the Spectre is, you know, I got it out for, for lockdown. I thought, well, yeah, if I'm going to do these, these these videos, I should get the original bases out. So I, I got it out and, and the action was I haven't played it for years and years and years. And I made the mistake of, for the first time in my life, trying to adjust the truss rod. And just the whole thing went, bang, and I just ruined it. And then I had to get find a tech who could oh look no. after it. But of course, then, but I had to drive around, leave it outside his house. Oh, because in the middle of yeah, lockdown. Yeah, it was in oh, darkness, yeah, yeah, lockdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. He's wiping it down yeah, with, you know, yeah, all... Lysol wipes. And yeah, right, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Guy, can we hear you? Can we, can we play some of that Madonna track? Oh, yeah, yeah, which yeah, just yeah, has yeah. some of your, like, brilliant octave playing oh, okay. in that moment. But I, I just want to say one more thing about the Spectre. The, the things that when I, as I got it out, and I yes. played it, it's like, oh my God, this bass is gorgeous. And it's, you know, the action on it is fabulous. It sounds, and I plug the octave in, it's like, there, there it is, there it is. There's the Madonna track, there's all that. But I still don't have any compulsion to play it today. Really? Do you know what I mean? To oh, use it on something. What, there's just yeah. something about it that is of a time. Got it. Ah. It was like a moment in time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It reminds Whereas you this, of that This era. will always be there. This will always be ah. there. Yeah, there, there are some bases that come and go. And it's a beautiful base. There's nothing wrong with it. And it looks great. It, you know, it's, it's not embarrassing. That's got a pointy head or anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but there's I just know, something. Man, I saw somebody <laughs> playing one of them pointy headstocks the other day. And I was like, kind I can of, see them coming. Kind of oh, coming yeah, 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 but I never yeah. did. Oh, did you never go there? I never, never did, there. so, you, never I, you know, yeah. Do you know, um, with that, this track, did you use the Spectre on it? So that was the Spectre, yeah. That was on the Madonna track. Yeah, What's the story around that? Like, I, there was this thing that you said on your channel, on your YouTube channel, yeah. about, like, not even... I don't really remember d- it. Uh, the first thing that Madonna ever said to me was... Because um, it was Pat Lennon, my dear friend Pat Lennon, who I'd uh, work with, and he came to see a Floyd show right towards the end of the tour, and it was like, we've been on tour for over a year, and I was just in bits, and I had no concept of what a life would be after this tour. What, you were just smashed? I was because just smashed, just like, and, yeah. you know, and, it's just, and living in this absurd bubble, and obviously, yeah. I, you know, once the tour was over, I wasn't going to live there anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I just had no conception of a life after it. And he said, hey, God, what are you doing after the tour? Do you fancy coming to play on the Madonna record? It's like, oh my God. It's worth saying <sighs> as well that Madonna was like 
a ma like she's a superstar. She's massive. massive. So, but she so was big, like yeah. the most famous woman in the world. Yes. Right, yeah. you know I mean? And she was also, um, I mean, that's, a, and she was also changing this, well, you know, she changed things like this being this very, very serious, massive pop artist who was starting to address issues and stuff. Mm. And, you know, yeah, yeah, she was the yeah. first kind of like as a, a pop singer who, who got the broadsheet sort of Sunday magazine co cover story, mm. which wasn't a bit of fluff. You know, yeah, she was, yeah, yeah. you know, she did a lot. And in fact, yeah, this ended up being very controversial. So I thought, oh my God, that'd be fantastic. Then he said, who do you want to play drums? But what? Wow. What? He asked Did, you. He yeah, like, Pat, you I get to pick my drummer. Wow. On, you know, on a, so I picked this, I'm not going to say his name, but I picked this friend of mine who then blew it out like a week before we were flying to LA for wow. another gig. And I was just like, and apparently sort of Madonna flipped out of that. Understandably, she's why, why are we getting this asshole? He can't even get a drummer to so, say, you know. And apparently the Oh no, she flipped out at you. Yeah, yeah, you. yeah well, she flipped out at Pat about yeah. me. Right, yeah, yeah. And he's going, no, no, you got it. And then apparently what saved the day, bless him, was um, she went for a walk on Malibu Beach and bumped into Nick Kamen. Of course, she knows she'd written a song for him and everything. And she, and she said, I haven't been dicked about by his Do you know this guy? Apparently he went, oh, guy's lovely. He's great. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah, like, yeah, thank yeah. you so much. So, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. It's a, and so the first time I spoke to Madonna was, I was, you know, of course, she's in L.A. and I lay time. And my phone goes at like four in the morning and I pick it up. Yeah. And this voice goes, I hear you're funny. Make me laugh. Whoa. <laughs> that was the first thing she said. The first thing she said to me. I can't remember what I said, but I did. I, 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 I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then, so when I turned up for the for the sessions, and uh, everything was done live, you know, it was it was all the tracks. Which, uh, oh, father is one that still gets me, which mm. is an amazing, amazing yeah, song. Yeah, yeah. And the tape ran three times. We literally ran through it once with her in the control room you doing do a guy vocal. LA. Did it in LA. It was at Pat Leonard's Johnny Yuma studio, which was just the most fabulous, fabulous studio. It had Amazing, some legendary yeah. Neve desk in it. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you know, I mean, he just made Warner Brothers half a billion dollars. He could, you know, do what he wanted. And so she'd just stand in the control room. What was it? And there would be two keyboard players, uh, Jay Winding and Pat, uh, uh, Bruce Gage on guitar, Sugarfoot Moffat on drums. And we just all had a chart. And we ran the song through and she sang a guide. And after she sang the guide, she then gave everyone notes. Oh, and they right. were all absolutely right wow they weren't like can you make it more purple they were all yeah. absolutely right. she said guy just duck eggs until i like that thing that phil you did at the end keep that jay leave the bells till the second chorus pat i leave it on the piano you know like bam and wow. she was hearing that as, as she, she sang, sang the guy and she'd sung the guy wow so we went all right let's go for one so we went for one that was it really including the vocal wow. then the oh, the tape ran twice well then they, they then they got in a string section tape ran once for that yeah and one Chester Cayman guitar slide guitar overdub. We went, and that's and that's and that was it. That's it. That's the song. Amazing. That's crap, isn't it? <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like yes. a like a prayer wasn't done as a, I wasn't there for the band day. I don't think. I so I don't know why. I, I have weird fragments of memory of this. It's, what it's year really, is it? It was 89. 89. But it was also, because the thing I remember is, I think the band can't have been in there because I must have been messing about, right? I must, when I, when I did that, I must have been thinking, oh, you know, just for a laugh. Because, uh, you know, see, so the thing is, with, with, when you're working with an artist like Madonna, back then, at that level of things, you're not really a, allowed a performance, right? The song is a vehicle for the artist. Everything yeah. there serves the artist. Nothing's about anyone else's personality. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Mm -hmm. It's just it's, the way it was. It's just yeah. it's the way, it's, because it's what you want. You, you know, it's not about like, oh, that's a nice little lick. Oh, that's a great, you know, it's yeah. just about, yeah. it's a machine, isn't it? It's yeah. a, that's why, when I, you know, because it is when I heard it, when I was back in LA to start this other project uh, with Pat, Toy Matinee, she heard I was in town, she invited me to the mix which I think was at Westlake, or I can't remember which studio it was, it was somewhere in the valley. And I went to the studio and she said, come and sit next to me. It was really sweet. I went and sat next to her. And they were just doing the last playback of Like a Prayer. And this was the first time I heard it. It has been done really loud, sitting next to Madonna. And it was like, I mean, because, you know, it's amazing. It's yeah. amazing yeah. by any metric. Yes. And I was thinking, that, that bass is insane. I, I was thinking, that bass is amazing. It kind of sounds like me, but it can't be me because it's way above my pay grade. You know, I, I, I don't get to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pino would, would get to do that. I don't get to do that. I'm not that guy yet. And at the end of it, I, I just said, Madonna, that is genuinely one of the most amazing things I've ever heard. And that bass is incredible. <laughs> Who played it? And she went, you dummy! <laughs> <Amazing>. <laughs> In these 
these moments. Yeah. And the octaves on, right? Yeah. yeah. That's the, the... Yeah. Oh, that bit, but that's actually been doubled by Mood. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> <laughs> So it's just basically, it's a slide down on one string, but you jump up one. And went to the end. Yeah. To the C. Um, yeah. 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 It's kind of like a key, it's like a keys line, isn't it? It is like a keys line, but it's not keys. And then the next time it goes, or something yeah. like that, yeah. What's interesting, by the way, is one thing I noticed, the one thing I don't do at any point in this is there's no blue falls. There's no... You know, the most obvious thing would, would be a... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I, there's not yeah, one. There's not one, no. There's no, there's... No, there's, there's Why? Never, Why? I don't know. It's like I had a weird thing. I think maybe I forgot them that day. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It you, wasn't intentional. You, some, no, sometimes you have to... But, and I'm really glad I didn't, because it's no, yeah, not... Because yeah. it, it can be a bit cheesy. Sure. You know, like it, bluesy, it, kind of. Yeah, yeah but it's a... You know, I, I, and it's such a go-to, but I'm really glad there aren't any on it. There's a great fill at the end, check it out. Because it was the 80s, I think I'm using unbelievably light strings, got oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. practically yeah. guitar strings that, yeah. you know. I think Dean Markley had, used to make me these special gauges. I can't remember what they were. I mean, it was probably like a 90 or something. <laughs> yeah. That, and, and, you know, and on a Spectre with all the top up. That's oh, why right. you can, that's you really hear, hear that. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's that one more fill that in you, the you actually, yeah, in the outro. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What's that? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Where, where was that coming from? Was it were, was it completely? He can't um, remember doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. no, I, but I know what you mean. It's like what was my playbook? Yeah. I, d I got the because the only I'd come off. You remember, I'd come straight off the Pink Floyd tour, and the only and, and the only thing I got to do. I, I had two songs I played on the octave pedal with that, which was uh, one slip I did a bit of, uh, and sorrow, and that's quite slow. Mm. And on the end bit of that, because David's doing this absolute balls out fucking massive solo. So it was kind of, I could I could kind of use that as practice time. Yes. Because yeah, <laughs> right. no one really cares what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so whatever octave toolkit I had kind of came from just noodling around while all eyes were on David at the end of Sorrow. Amazing. <laughs> so it's coming from a kind of rock place. That was the thing I really liked about this, that 80s thing because I was coming from disco and then being put into all these rock acts. So it well, was, you know, coming from originally being a kind of punk and then, you know, just a rock and roll guy, then disco then and that whole thing in the early 80s we're kind of uh, if you're a cool kid in west london kind of rock music ceased to exist for a bit mm -hmm. it was just uncool all of it yeah or, you know yeah. everything we were just into african music we were listening to manu Bango and fella kuti and, and reggae and funk and disco that's all we listened to you know and so so that was a really nice interruption in my kind of path to then you know that became my toolkit and then you put that back into a rock context. And that's so, where it came from, yeah. yeah. Like, I've just pulled up Michael Jackson here. Just a, you know, another, another guy you happened to have well, played no, with. We, you know? well, yeah, but that, came, that was a direct result of Like a Prayer. That's what was, it was it? Oh. Yeah, that was, it, was, it was Bill Bottrell who engineered Like a Prayer, was producing this. Because it's got the octave on again, right? Yeah, but that, it's the funny thing. Yeah, <laughs> okay, we'll get to that. There's a, because the funny thing is, it's because Michael heard Like a Prayer. Oh, and he, he wanted that sound. Yeah, and he wanted that sound. And yeah, I used to do this in my stand-up show. I said, yeah, Michael Jackson heard it. And he said, eh, eh, which apparently translates as I particularly like that bass sound and it'll be appropriate for my next single. So Bill said, Bill Betrayal said, listen, come down and do this Michael Jackson session. He wants, you know, he wants your Like a Prayer group. I'm like, oh, mate, come on. And luckily I was in LA at the time. This was this insane period I had. I was actually doing the Robbie Robertson album. And, I, and it was this amazing thing of having to say to Robbie Robertson, Robbie, can I leave early tonight? Because I've got a Michael Jackson... <laughs> 
session. session to do. And he just went, what am I supposed to say to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I dip out a little early? Yeah. 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 When I turned up and was confronted with this, what about sunlight? It's like, what? Oh, yeah. We, what? We, so I, you I, hadn't heard the track? No. Oh, you went right. down the studio. You went down the studio, okay. and it was, yeah, with my octave pedal, and come on. Yes, right, yeah. And it's like, cling, did it. What? And it's like, what am I supposed to do? And it's in A flat. Ah. Now, rule of thumb, kids, pop pickers, if when you're playing with the octave pedal, rule of thumb is you don't really want to do anything below D. D is your kind of lowest key where you can be comfortable before your, your, your tracking starts getting glitchy. Yeah. Obviously, it's going to track really well today and completely blow me out of the water. <laughs> but this was in A flat, and what I should have done, I should have obviously done. But that's just not going to fly. You know, you've got you Steve Ferroni. This, yeah, it needs to be. So it's like, well, well, I'll give it a go. You know, I don't like, I don't know, Professor. It's a slim chance, but it just <laughs> might work. <laughs> and it, so it's an A flat. Wow. Right, and then luckily, it goes up to B flat. So, well, that's something. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Throw me a bone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, but uh, obviously this is actually tracking incredibly well. Because usually, because usually it's like because if you listen to the someone sent me the isolated bass track and it's yeah. like oh, it is glitching. It's glitching yeah. Like, yeah. 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 What studio did you do it in? You know, it was, right? Is it West Lake or East Lake? I can one of the lakes. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lake. Yeah. It was really weird. It was where Michael used to work all the time, and he'd had it. Yeah, you know, he was so he, he'd had it done so that, like, for instance, the loo had a TV monitor in it and doors at both ends, so that he could see if anyone wanted to come to the bathroom and he could leave through the other way. It was, yeah. really, it was all very like you know. There was the famous story that when I finally turned up, when he was finally, because I kept going down the studio. I've told the story so many times. But, uh, Tell us it again, yeah, please, um, yes. Okay, so it was like, guy come down the studio. So I rushed down the studio and got there and said, sorry, Michael's just left. Well, okay, so I'm, I'm with this thing. And I came up with basically that line. And, uh, and he said, okay, I'll play it to Michael and let you know. All right, so next I guess, so come down the studio. Michael's here, great. Get down the studio. Sorry, Michael's just left. I was like, oh, he liked this. He didn't like that. He liked this, none of that. All right, okay, so I put down some more ideas. Come back tomorrow, Michael will be here. Wow. So go down the studio. Day okay, three. Michael's, day three, go down there. Michael's just left. Right. <laughs> and it, and, but there was this really weird, different vibe in the studio, right? There was this, there was this new engineer. I say engineer in inverted yeah. commas, because this was a giant Samoan bloke yeah. who would probably be better suited to being, oh, I don't know, bodyguard yes. or something. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And he's down one end of the mixing desk and he won't let me get down there because this is back in the days where you'd smoke in studios. I was probably trying to get an ashtray or something. Yes. This guy's like blocking my way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> So I start playing, and then this guy standing there so he leans down. Yeah, I think Michael will find that appropriate. Uh, what? So this guy who has the most tenuous grasp of the English language, yes. an absolutely intrinsic understanding of what Michael Jackson requires from a bass performance. So <laughs> <laughs> I go, like, hang on a minute. Someone is hiding behind the desk talking to him, telling him what to tell me. Are you yes. in the control in room? In the control room. And I think, Michael Jackson is hiding behind the control Unreal. He's there telling this guy, and, I, and I'm trying to get Bill's eye, and he's just going, don't look at me, don't look at me. Don't. And Because there was a thing at the time, Michael was renowned for hiding. He used to just hide. Yeah. Well, I just went through this whole pantomime. Of, the, the joke I do in my stand-up job, obviously it's not really true, is I said, so I, I tried to think of what was the most inappropriate thing I could possibly play. So, well, how about if I went, Americans won't get this. Workers' playtime, or something. It's an old radio. <laughs> Every English knows it's old. And of course, this. But this guy. So I, I, I played something. It wasn't that, but I played something mental, right? And I knew. And this. But this guy still had to go <laughs> and check it out. I don't think Michael would. Of course, it is. Uh, back here, but so did you oh. ever meet him? No. So I never met him. No. Yeah. He was in the room. Kind of. But then yeah. I and I forgot about it because that was 1989. And then he put out an album. I only found out I was on it because someone called me up and said, "Hey, guy, you know you're on the new Michael Jackson album because my name's on it." Crackers. Amazing. And uh, and then I heard the track. It's like, oh yeah, it's that. It's 
Oh, and I'd forgotten. Don't worry, Sharon. I ain't forgetting. Sharon's giving me the eye over there. We have got a question. Uh oh. We've got a question. Oh, yeah, oh, go yeah. for it. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. This is going to be humiliating. I've got no idea, actually. Hey, Guy, it's me, Justin Hawkins from The Darkness. Oh. Um, my question for you is um, when you were playing bass on Earth Song and then it went to that first key change where it went. Oh, 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 did you wish it went? Oh, 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 and then went. Oh, 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 oh. So it kept on going up and up and up until uh, there were no more notes, and then you would have to go down, and then just infinite. Do you ever wish it was an infinitely an infinite song that never ended and always went up a semitone or a tone? What is it? Oh, that's another question. How? What is the increment of that key change? Is it a tone or is it a semitone or is it neither of those things? Sorry for all these. Keychain stuff. I'm just fascinated by it. Nice one. Have a great interview. Cheers. Uh, cheers. Uh, Justin Hawkins. Justin Hawkins. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good, good lad. Justin good Hawkins. lad yeah, yourself, yeah, yeah. Justin. Excellent. <laughs> yes, I do wish it was. A, I, I wish it was like one of those impossible Isha things. There's a thing that happens at the end of Echoes, the Pink Floyd song that like we currently play with Nick Mason, Source for the Secrets, where the bands do where it was. It sounds like it, vocals going up infinitely. Yeah. Where you just go ah, uh, and the way we it was recorded originally was the band. You stand far back from the mic. You go ah. Uh, and then walk oh, back yeah. and then everyone fades in so it sounds like it's going up forever but it isn't so it's like an Isha type of so yes I would love it if it went up infinitely but didn't go up infinitely and was like an Isha type uh, illusion like that so yeah you're absolutely right as I said what would have been really nice would have been if it had gone up to D at least, which, is, uh, <laughs> which would have made it easier on the bass. Which would have made it easier on the bass, yeah. exactly. Which is actually the lowest because it starts in A flat and uh, goes up a tone. It goes up to B flat. Excellent questions. Thank you very much. Cheers, and all the very best to you, mate. Justin Hawkins. Justin Hawkins. Justin Hawkins. Oh, great YouTube. Great YouTube channel. Yes. Hey, before we forget about like the, the the board as well. Yeah. What else have you got on the board? Okay. Because you said this is a B board. This is B. This is my nightclub board. This is not what my board looked like, but it has the sort of things that I. It's it's. It's basically for like a, you know, to give you a rough approximate, gives me a rough approximation of things. Obviously, it's got an octave, chorus, compressor. This delay, which I think might have been, I might have, no, because I usually do it stereo. This delay time, which is usually set for one of these days, obviously, but it's actually set for this is the the idea, the song that I actually co wrote on the Division Bell. In, in the, it's, I mean, it, it's a Rick Wright song, but I came up with the original idea for it, yeah. where, which was me literally, I was trying to think of, because it was just me and Rick in the sort of studio room at Brit Row, and I was trying to inspire Rick, and I was trying to think of a Pink Floyd y thing to do. And it was, you know, because what, Roger and David both are particularly good at is that thing of using your instruments and using an effect in a way that isn't normal rather you know yes, yes. and I, so I had this idea of trying to come up with like a delay pad but with a no as well anyway I came up with this idea that if you swell up with a delay and then hit a chord then you get a bass pad and a set of string mm. chords oh, so okay, yeah, I wrote yeah, this yeah, thing yeah. which is got it yeah yeah so it's like two parts yeah uh. Nice of a stereo. Yeah. And I thought they're very Rick sort of chords, Sarty esque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing, so, yeah. doesn't it? so anyway, that's the song wearing the inside out. And I love how you're plucking before, right? Yeah, you're, yeah, you have to yeah, pluck before yeah. and then to, fade yeah. it in, right? It's a very specific thing you have to do with the I've, right hand. Yeah, it's because the funny thing is, in theory, you're not. Ta I'm sure I'm finding a time to do. Do you know what I mean? Yes. In, in theory, you just need to be before, but I'm sure I'm doing like a kind of three and a half or something. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. Synthesizer pedal. I got. I think that's for um, that's for playing with Brian Ferry with Roxy Music. He, he um, that's one of them where. Uh, Virginia Plain, one of them, I can't remember, is just actually a synth, so I copy it on a synth. Oh, right, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. By the way, it's not that exciting a board, it's like, you know, core fa I mean, phaser, which is just... Actually, one thing with the, fa with the source full of secrets... I love that. That's a class. That's where Roger was brilliant. Is for coming up with things oh, that a bass yes. player wouldn't do. You know, using the the sort of instrument, not necessarily just in a technical way. Same way as like the ticking clocks on time. No way. The ticking clocks on that's time. What, yeah. on the, 
That's that. The bass. And I had to do it with Floyd. I had to do it in time. I had to watch I had this giant sc the screen behind me with this giant cartoon of a spinning clock. And you have to be in time with the clock. The original was on bass. Yes, yeah, if you listen to it, that's what the original is. You are blowing my mind right now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's that was so a, that, cool. That was the genius of Pink Floyd. It was ideas rather than money and equipment. Yes. You know? yeah. And, and you uh, had to yeah. use the tool that you had. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah, so how can we make this happen? One thing I noticed, for obviously, I, I went back and listened to loads of Floyd bootlegs. Because for a lot of the earlier stuff that we're doing, especially like Obscure by Clouds period and all that, which is, you know, really one of my, my favourite Floyd period almost, where a lot of the songs were extended and there was mm. jams and they were trying new sections and everything like that. And Roger has this thing, I noticed that he just kicks in the phaser all the time. Really? <laughs> all the time. It's when just, in like, doubt, yeah, boom, just, When did I to. kick the phaser? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's just like, brilliant. I can yeah. kick a phaser in any time I want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's, it's become a thing where there's all songs that go, yeah, it's going to do the phaser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> in fact, there's, there's, there's oh, a great book. The, the song Obscured by Clouds, when we do that, which is a... This is one of those... But you put the phaser on, it's like... And you're right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's yeah. 972. Kind of makes the notes. Yeah. And what's on the bigger board? Oh, uh, my bigger board? Yeah. Everything! <laughs> I've actually got pedals. I've even got pace pedals now. I've gone full prog. Oh, oh have you wow. got the... the uh, I've got a called, Taurus, uh, but I don't use the Taurus. The Taurus. No, yeah, I've, got yeah. the, I've got a MIDI board of pedals. And, and the MIDI Tour, which is just like a... It's a it's Taurus a small, on a box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, because I've been trying to find... Once you've got the pedal, I only got them for Echoes, but then it's like, now I've got them. I want to find things to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the thing with old Floyd is that it's really interesting. Roger was very much like a proto-hooky. It's all dusty end. And there are sometimes yeah. it's great, sometimes it isn't. For things like Loose for Sam, like he plays at the same octave as a guitar, so obviously I'll be. You've got to play it there, you can't yeah, play it yeah. that. You know. it's, yeah. yeah, so there's some things like we do Atom Heart Mother, and the funky dung section of that, right, which is again, which is. And, and that, and I love doing like that, and that kind of, you have to put it out there, but it's like, ah, that really misses. So I hit, for, for the G, yeah. I hit the bass pedal. And then I started going, bum, bum, and then you start getting bum, 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 bum. It's like, no, stop it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> I'm not turning into the Gap band. <laughs> <laughs> Since we're on Floyd, yes, I want I want to listen to this. It's uh, it's sorrow. But uh, there's, like you play this really fantastic line in the intro. In the intro, the line in the intro. And I'm like, what was that? So and just a bit of like love for Gilmore as well at the beginning of this. <sighs> so good. Oh. Think, but, but, yeah, that bit. Do you know what's great is my missus. Her description of the first time she saw him said. What's that song where he's waking the dinosaurs up? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's incredible, isn't it? <laughs> this guy playing the perk, Jerry Wallace. Yeah. Uh -huh. Let's do one more. <laughs> guy, Pratt, dude. <laughs> Come on. What's that line? What's that line that you play in there? Okay. It's and just really annoying is they went back and re-recorded some stuff to sort of update it because David always said there's he said there's so much synth stuff I'm doing on this album, which is stuff I do on a guitar. Why didn't I do it on a guitar? Oh, I got it, yeah. And also he wanted to bung Rick on it. And so and he forgot to put me on it. Because that because the record is just him playing. So it hasn't got that line. No, oh. so and it's and and I said, I thought I was going to do that. I went, oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot. But because um, that's the one thing where it's not, this is one of the few lines, you know, in my career where this, it's like, I didn't play it, David played it, but I own it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I made that mine from, from all the live stuff. Yeah. But yeah, and this, I swear to God, this, it just fell out. It just fell out one night. There's actually so two, nice, two ways it? I do it. It's a, or, or yeah, or, and there's another a short one which is. And I know you said this, but I have to ask again: when you're using octave pedal, and even back on the NS2 Spectre, were you always bridge pickup? Was yeah. it always on the bridge pickup? Yeah, always on the bridge pickup. 
How did you get but it I, to but, track? But, how did you get the octave pedal to track so well? Uh, it's because it's bridge pickup. You know, it's the it's the, the the tighter and toppier a signal you're giving the pedal, the better it re responds to it. Have you had problems enemy. with that? Oh, I have found oh, the okay. opposite to be true. I oh, found really? that, man, I just can't do it. Whenever I'm playing bridge pickup and playing hard, it's glitching all over the place, and I end up oh. using neck pickup. So it is fascinating. Well, uh, to okay, me. Uh, well, do you know what? I, I, okay, you might have, I might have had it wrong all along. No, uh, it's no in that you, you might be right. I, I'll tell you why I do that. I say it's because of tracking, but when I think about it, it's actually not. I do it. it's because of sound. You like the sound. It's because of sound because you, you've got as much bass as you want on here. Right, and it's giving and it, you all that and it bottom. Gives, yeah. yeah. And so, so it's to keep the top signal tight. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, you're right. No, I could be completely wrong. Lee Sklar, in fact, told me yeah. exactly what you should do to play an octave pedal. I went, yes. that is absolutely brilliant. And so, of course, I never did it. <laughs> <laughs> what did he tell you? It's, it's, it's just put a bit of gaffer tape uh, over the strings by the bridge. And that cuts out all the, because what's making you glitch and not track is, all, is overtones right. and harmonics. Yes. And if you deaden down the strings with a bit of gaffer, then that stops all the overtones and you're just getting the note. And you went, right. I went, that's so brilliant. <laughs> I'm so never going to do that because that's exactly what I do with all good ideas, as I'm told. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> oh, and we have another Pink Floyd track. We too. do, we do. Oh. You, pu you pulled this one up, didn't you? Ian? I mean, guy, this is incredible. When you're doing Run Like Hell oh, yeah, yeah. and David sings and then you sing. I sing well, I shout, yeah. It is incredible. Spectre again. Yeah. It's tuned to D. Drop D? What, drop just D on the E string? No, just drop. the D. There's this one thing I do here, which I really like. Oh, With the bob, kick Yes. Make your face up in your favorite disguise. With your button down there. And you roll the line <laughs> so much love fun. it. So much. But well, so that was my audition. Was it? Hold on. That was your audition? Yeah. Wait. That was the piece. What do you mean that that was your audition? I, well, to, to, I never had to play the bass to audition for Pink Floyd. What? Well, I guess, were well, they just like, yeah, we know you can play bass. Yes, mate. yes. <laughs> <laughs> we know you can play bass, but. And also, you you know, especially at the time, the way things were, I think, you know, David liked the idea of being as dismissive of their bass player as he could. You can do that. <laughs> Anyone can do that. You know, I think there was an element of that. And yeah. so, and I turned up and I'd completely f***ed up. I'd, I'd, a friend of mine had come around and I'd sat, stayed up really late. And so I was really hungover and underslept. Just like, oh, you, man, you idiot. This is your shot, and you've oh. blown it. You know, this is you spend the rest of your life. And I just sort of turned up there, literally like, sort of like a condemned man with my bow. And I walked into David's houseboat, put the bass out, and I started unzipping it. And he went, No, no, no don't do that. It's what I said. I don't, he said, I know you can do that. He said, uh, I just want to see what, because that's all he was really worried about. Oh. He said, I, I want to see if you can sing Run Like Hell. And he just had a recording from his solo tour. And I was like, Really? Yeah. And it was like, Usually, to come in sort of cold and awake and sober in a morning, yeah. and have to do that would be really awkward and embarrassing. But the state I was in, it was like I had this, I had all the angst and the pain <laughs> and the, you know, and the shame. Yes. Of, yeah, of, yeah, no, yeah. You know, and I went in and, I, and I, I screamed it like in Joe Strummer at Glastonbury without a mic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. you know, and apparently I, I was so on it. And he just went, well, you know, I'll let you know, I, I went off. And, he, and I, he said, would you come back for, you know, so I went, OK. And he just didn't believe it. That was the, really? So when I came back, he just said, will you sing that again? And Nick was there, Nick was there. And apparently, and because all I remember is being terrified. They remember me as being this really cocky guy. And I was not. You I was terrified. terrified. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I don't know if it came, if it was just sort of pure defensiveness. And he said, OK, I want you to sing that again. And I said, why? I've already done it. And apparently that's what got me the gig. You're kidding. Yeah, really? David went, what a cocky son of a bitch. He'll do. <laughs> He'll do, yeah. Yeah, because he can do it. He can stand, you know, if, wow. if that's his attitude, he can stand up there and do it. Did it ever, has it ever, like, we've talked about this before, just like that story of you being sort of like terrified. We've talked before about having really horrific experiences, like coming up as a musician, you know, auditioning for bands, all of that, like, yeah, 
you know, people look at people like yourself and they're like, oh, my, they played with da, 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 da. Is there any stories that come to mind? I'm trying to think, no, like, I've been very, very lucky because I've never really auditioned for anyone. So you didn't ever Do feel really? like out of your depth, like you were just like, oh. I've always felt out of my depth. <laughs> <laughs> no, always. I mean, my, I still get, I get terrible imposter syndrome all the time. Really? Do you? Yeah. yeah, yeah, still do. It's like, why, you know, my, you know, I go to any pub and there's someone playing the bass. You just think, oh, God, he's better than me. <laughs> Why do you feel you still get that? I don't know. I, I think, but it, it's a good thing. There's nothing worse than being, well, yeah, I'm that guy. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's, yeah, you know, you, you miss them. Yeah. Because also, I think it's very important that you've got to always be a fan. You know, you've you've got to always still have that kind of air of reverence and wonder because that's got to come out in your play. I mean, that's what used to get me, you know, playing with Pink Floyd because I went to see The Wall at Earl's Court. I went every night wow. first of, just because I used to drink in a pub with the manager of Earl's Court. Nothing Amazing. to do with the band and no music business. Just this guy, the guy who ran yeah. the hall and he could get you, you know, into the motor show and into the yacht show. And, Fantastic. And Pink Floyd. And Pink Floyd, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I went, and, and it was, and it was, it remains the best gig I've ever seen in my life. I'm still the best thing I've ever seen. And I was wrestling with all sorts of stuff at the time as well. It was 1980, 81, and you couldn't like Pink Floyd. You couldn't be my age and like Pink Floyd in London. Be a cool young musician. I was, you know, I was dressed like one of the Clash, sitting there going, I love this. No, I can't. Wait, no. It's a, <laughs> I feel so guilty. So, so, yeah, exactly. So there was all, you know, I was only a teenager, so, you know, yeah. that stuff still matters. So, so it's, it's really funny that, you know, Younger people won't understand that, that having that cultural problem. And the, yeah. you know, there's never been anything like the pre and post punk universe in mm. music. There's never been anything like that. Anyway, so that was the best thing I ever. So I had I always had this wonderful thing, and I still get it with the sources. When I used to look down at the audience, and rather than thinking, "Yeah, aren't we great?" I'd just be looking at these guys, going, "I know, I know, I know, it's amazing, isn't it? I know, you know, I was you, I know." And I, I still love that with an audience. I think it's really, you've always got to rem you know, re remember what it's like to be in the audience and try and make it like that for people. I like this idea of an imposter syndrome making you actually a thinking human, like, a, like an actual working, living, you know, not a sociopath, right? You, you have to have a little bit of yeah, imposter that, syndrome not to be insane. Yeah, but you know, Gary Kemp, who's somebody, you know, this is the guy, he's written, you know, the songs that the two songs, you know, he wrote the My Way of his generation. And, he's written, and he said that he's still waiting for the tap on the shoulder. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 You're yeah. not the yeah, guy I'm we sorry, were. Yeah, yeah sorry, right, sorry, right. Just come this way. So. <laughs> yeah. Here's, here's your overall and there's the card start working on. No. Yes. <laughs> yes. Dude, tell us about your podcast before before we do anything else. Before we do anything else. Okay, so, um, yeah, the, so being in Source Full of Secrets, right, which I must say is the most fun thing I've ever done. It really is because it's, it's Pink Floyd as a pop group. Yeah. You know, before it's this vast, important edifice. And it's, yeah. and so we're just guys having fun. Mm. And we talk to the audience, which, you know, we mess about. And, and it's also, you know, the music is taken incredibly seriously. And it's really nice for, for you know, it's a great thing for an audience because just to have, to, to see what Pink Floyd was at, you before. know. Before. Before all that. Yeah. And it's the same yeah. thing. I look, I look at Nick behind me playing the drums and I see that kid on stage at the UFO club. Yeah, and yeah, that yeah, takes yeah. me back to the kid on stage at the Hope and Anchor and Gary's, it takes him back to the Blitz and it, you know, it yeah, takes yeah, you yeah. all back. It's a really lovely thing. But anyway, we all sit on the bus talking on the first European tour we did, I brought a box set of uh, the old Grey Whistle Test DVDs. Yeah. And so we just used, to, and it was just fantastic. We were saying, because the best thing after playing music is talking about music. We all yeah. love talking about music. Yes. Like, you know, yeah. I, frankly, I don't care if I never hear any music ever again. If I can talk about <laughs> it. can talk about it. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's like pedals. Yeah. You know, yeah, I don't yeah. care what it sounds like. Let's just talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so we just used, and what was great, so we'd all talk about, you know, these bands that we were fans of when we were kids. And of course, Nick would usually know them or have met them or something. And it became a thing that we'd spent all day talking, and we were having such fun. And, Gary and I just had this thing, why don't, we're always looking for things to do together. Why don't we try a podcast? Why don't we see, so we'll try with a few mates. So Nick yeah. Mason was the first, yeah. and then Phil Manzanera, because he's not, we asked various friends. And, it's, and we suddenly realized that, that people love talking to us because, yeah. because we are musicians, because it is like sitting around the pub or, you know, that, that thing of sitting around talking, which, so we have this thing, it's called The Rock on Tours, and it's, and it's the number one podcast most weeks. It's massive. Yes. It's massive, isn't it? Yeah. It, yeah. Were you expecting that? No. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. And we thought, and we've done like nearly 90 of them now. Amazing. Wow. And people keep wanting to talk to them. And people love. And, and like, so the th great thing is, no matter how well you know the artist, we always find something we've never heard. With Nick Mason, I get stuff I never knew. Yeah. It's yeah. like, you know, it's so. And we've had two big scoops. Two. We have one story that got onto the front page of the Times and in the Guardian. Oh, amazing. Which was when Bob Harris told us that Nixon asked Elvis to spy 
on John Lennon. <gasps> wow! <laughs> that is a scoop. <laughs> that is a wow. scoop. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> so you can find it on iTunes, right? You can find it on iTunes, on Spotify, everywhere, Spotify, and... um, Apple Podcasts. Yeah, it's on everywhere. It's got a website. Go to rockontails.com oh, and you find them all. And we're about to start a new season. We've got some great people coming up. Uh, yeah, it's, it's such good fun. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay seated as we prepare for the... String Change Challenge. What you should do is everyone has to use these strings and they have to be exactly this distance from them. That's exactly right. <laughs> this, this is Guy setting up <laughs> the rules the right now. Yes. yes. With with this seal intact. <laughs> Absolutely. <yeah. laughs> no doubt. If yeah. the seal is broken, it so voids. Break, it voids. Yes. Exactly, yeah. Yes. Stewart's inquiry. <laughs> yeah, this is inspired by Top Gear. Myself and Nick over there, huge fans of... Are you even a fan of Top Gear, Nick? No, he hates it. <laughs> I am a massive fan of Top Gear. They had this really great challenge where people used to come in and drive cars and there was a leaderboard and we were like, shit, what can we do for bass players that's similar? And we came up with the stringing challenge, but pub quiz at the same time. We're going to time yeah, What you, you do is you get in someone like me, <laughs> who's just been on tour for months, who clearly hasn't had to change his own strings. Ooh. <laughs> well, I haven't, have I? Yeah. Not at all. You've, so, got a, you've got a tech, haven't you? Yeah, I've got a tech. So this this is, you know. This is to bring you back down so to I'm, earth, mate. It is bringing me back down to earth. <laughs> Uh, but yes, it's also, you're pitting me against, so basically, less successful people have an advantage. <laughs> uh, oh, and I've got a list of questions right here with which to distract you. Are you ready? Always. Oh, Angon, you can take yeah, a yeah, take water it, get, get limbered up, get a sip of water. Lunges. Yeah. Oh, you know. <laughs> me, 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 me. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a, a, a three second countdown. Okay. Oh my goodness. I can feel the tension. I, I'm yes. gonna go to pieces. I know it, I'm just gonna go to pieces. <laughs> if it makes you feel better, I've decided that I like the sound of dead strings because I'm so bad at changing the <laughs> <laughs> Just leave them on. <laughs> just leave them on, <laughs> no point. All right, three, Die frat. two, one, go. Oh, and just oh. tearing into it. Oh, well, no, come on! <laughs> you Fuck. can do it. Do you need your teeth? You could use the snips. That's not fair. I did not see that coming. <laughs> These are pliers. You can't open this pack. Oh, you got it. You got it. Oh, man. That's why I don't play these strings. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Tearing not fair. That's not fair. If I was using my strings, I'd just be casually opening a nice paper packet <laughs> right now. You gotta oh, want it. Go, oh, no, I've got to know which one's which. <laughs> You've got it. Well, this it just gets worse. <laughs> right, this hit him with the trivia. Hit him with go. the pub quiz. Here Come on, guy. In addition, wait, hold on. Here we go. In addition to his fretless prowess, Elaine Caron is the master of slap bass. Who is regarded as the godfather? Larry of Graham. Oh. Well done. Wow. When? What year is that the G? was the electric bass invented? Uh, 1951. Ooh. We're going to run out of questions. Okay, get with another. <laughs> and he's got the G string on. Here we go. <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see through these? <laughs> <laughs> After Leo Fender signs his 10 year do not compete after selling Fender to CBS. These don't work. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Hang on, these aren't, the, these aren't right plans. Oh, you got it, you got it. What company, wildly successful company, does he go on to start in 1976? Music Man. There is no stumping this man. There is no stumping this man. <laughs> oh, these are easy, come on. Fast fingers down. <laughs> <laughs> Spectre is a collaboration between Stuart Spector and... Ned Steinberger. Jeez. Oh! Crusher, crusher. Can you name me, besides Spector and besides Steinberger, name me three other boutique bass brands? Uh, Dingwall, <clears throat> Status, and... Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Who would we call a boutique bass brand? Keep on this task. <laughs> uh, oh no! no that's amps. Isn't that's, it? amps. <laughs> that's amps. I thought they made bases as well. Dingwall. Did you say status? I said status. Dingwall status. NS. NS. Like. I'm gonna. I'm gonna accept it. I'm gonna accept it. I'm gonna accept it. We're gonna keep going. And the G string is on. I don't know. You might want to slip it over the saddle back there. Well, I might. Guy. I might. There we go. I there might. we go. Oh, yeah. Good. Good. 
That's because he's had his tech doing it. <laughs> I have. Guy Pratt, according to Davey 504, the police or FBI might give a knock on your door if you use this controversial piece of plastic to play your bass. A pick. Yes, I also would have accept, accepted plectrum. Plectrum. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, they're both, neither are acceptable, that's the whole point. <laughs> True or false, Antigua is the greatest Fender color ever. False. Incorrect. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's burgundy mist. It's burgundy mist. Everyone of course knows. it's burgundy mist. Of course it's burgundy mist. Speaking of burgundy mist, if the name Betsy were taken, what would be the alternative name for your lovely jazz bass? Um, well, there's the thing, because I have a few. She has a sister, which is, uh, and they're all based on Elizabeth, obviously, because uh, I've got my copies, which are called Betsoids, and there's Eliza, uh, Lizzie, <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, and Elle. And which would you choose? Uh, well, uh, Liza, Liza, because it's the grandest. A lovely name. There you go. A lovely name. Or and Lisbeth. 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 I like it. And we're halfway. We've got a D string on. We have a D string on the bass, everybody. What's, what we're looking at time wise, Sharon? We are at 355. Doing 355. good. 355. I mean, you're doing great, guy. I, I don't mean, think I am. I you think have. I'm doing terribly. I think I'm putting the wrong <laughs> strings on. <laughs> <laughs> the strings I just have right. to it's be on the bass. It's just well, they're in their own packets. <laughs> <laughs> you have to take a look. Mm. I think that's. I think Let's talk about strings for, for a moment. Tell Shall me. We? Shall we? The, must we? The most, <laughs> we must. We are. We will. Tell me the most standard of all bass string gauges for a four string set. Uh, 45 to 105? Absolutely. I think so. I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I don't use it, but that's apparently it is. Oh, yeah. Look at that. All right. We're cutting. Oh, I just want to. I'm not going to. Yeah, help. I don't like these not pliers. These are not like the pliers I would use. Oh, makes it harder. Yeah, you got it. No, it's not. They usually have that little bit at the bottom, oh. don't they? These does, this doesn't have that. No, it hasn't got oh. the bit that I use. No. I've got, a, I've got an extra set of snips if we need it. Yeah, these are inferior pliers. I'm sorry. Okay, I'd... okay. Pause timer. We're pausing, we're pausing. pausing the timer. Pause timer. For inferior equipment. For, we're yeah, pausing the timer. Oh, hang on. It's coming hey, off. Oh, Come on. Oh, resume oh, timer. Back in, back resume in the game. timer. <laughs> so, and as usual, I've got all these lengths wrong, so nothing quite goes wrong. Oh, no, that, no, that one's about right. It's, That's a, almost right. You're doing great. You're doing great. And now your next question. Don't you patronize me. <laughs> uh. <laughs> a very important question, especially to an American. Yes. PB&J or beans on toast? I don't quite ex understand. <laughs> Peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Oh, beans on toast. What are you talking about? <laughs> jelly toast, doesn't mate. even exist as a thing over here. We have jam. <laughs> Incorrect, but since I'm here, let's go for it. Incorrect, but correct. It's also, fine. can I say another one? Yes. Cheese on toast. Grilled cheese. What the f is that about? It's nonsense. <laughs> it's Two delicious. bits of bread. No, you don't have anything on toast in America. You do not understand the concept of things on toast. Av it's avocado ridiculous. toast? Yeah, yeah, finally. <laughs> <laughs> It's very, we're on breakfast in America. Cheese? I think I'm going to put your egg on the toast. It's like, put the egg on the toast and have your cheese on toast. Don't have two bits of bread. <laughs> <laughs> so you want an open-faced grilled cheese. How dare No, it's cheese on toast, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a lesson. It's all good. You are. I am. I'm getting a lesson. <laughs> Plenty more where that came from. <laughs> uh, Guy Pratt, what inspired the classic 60s Fender custom colors like Burgundy Mist? And shoreline gold. Uh, well, they were car colours, weren't they? They were, they were from the because there yeah. was a, it was an auto workshop next to his original garage where he set up, and so they were all car colours. There is no snowing this man. No, no. You got it. You got it with the snips. We need to pause oh, the timer again. It. Oh no, we don't. We got it. Oh, and we are so close. Oh, so I can taste it. Do you have to tune the bass, <laughs> or do they just need to be on? Sharon, deferring to you. He's doing so well. Shouldn't you have figured out the rules before you make me do this? <laughs> I think they just no, need to be on. No, we thought you were making up the rules. Does it need to go in the goal or can it go over the goal? <laughs> I think they just need to be on. We're I agree. So close. I agree with Ian. They just have they to just be on. They just need to be on and yeah. we are so close. And they on need to be at tension. At they need tension. to be at tension. Yeah, I am. I don't mind telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, do you have a final question? Uh, that, I'm out of questions, Scott. What? Okay, which was Leo Fender's favorite bass to play? The jazz bass or the P bass? I, I I don't know. I would say the jazz. 
didn't play bass. Oh, that is a... Oh, oh that yeah. was a... Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, it's about the only, in fact, the only person who's with a sort of major mo sort of 20th century uh, musical uh, company who didn't play the accordion. Everyone played the <laughs> accordion. Charlie Watkins played the accordion. There was um, someone else played the accordion. Everyone played the accordion. Are you done? I'm done. He's Aye. done. 740. Yeah, but we have no idea if that's any good, do we? Because I'm the first one. <laughs> well, that, that, that might be literally uh, the I, worst time I, anyone is ever going to do. Incredible. Incredible speed. A lovely time, guy. A lovely time. <laughs> nothing else, we know that you won the trivia round. Okay. Damn right. Well done on the trivia. Oh, thank you. Well, no, I, I'm annoyed about the base, uh, boutique base brand. Because of course we should know. There's, there's hundreds of them. I know. It's hard to get there, though. When, especially when you've got a task such well, as this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm annoyed. I'm, I still can't think. There's so many of them. Sleep easy. Sleep yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gents, Mr. Guy Pratt. Yeah. Uh, obviously yeah. joined by Ian Allison and Sharon Reynolds over there. Thank you so much. And if you want more stuff like this, let us know in the comments who you want as next up on the show and we will make it happen for you. Take it easy. See you in a minute. Some joke over my missus, the thing about uh, when I take my picture, I was going to my catalogue poses. <laughs> <laughs> give, give us a catalogue yeah, pose, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that one. That's, that's it. That's a good one. Well, oh. You should do some voguing, really. <laughs>